Low energy electromagnetic radiation interacts with matter in a classical manner. In the microwave region of the spectrum, this is familiar in cooking, where the rapidly oscillating electric field causes movement of polarized water molecules in food, which in turn transfers heat to the food. At the shorter wavelengths, and therefore higher energies of visible light, the interaction determines the color and transparency of objects. As the energy increases further, the quantum nature of light becomes more apparent. As energy increases, the first effect of a quantum interaction that occurs is the photoelectric effect, which was first observed as an increased likelihood of a spark discharge between two electrodes when ultraviolet light was shone on the system. This was first observed by Heinrich Hertz in 1886 and 1887, while he was paradoxically performing experiments to confirm the electromagnetic wave theory of light as predicted by Maxwell's equations. The effect was explained later by Einstein using Planck's quantization of energy theory. In the photoelectric effect, light is seen as a particle, the photon, which is absorbed by electrons in the atom. If the incident photon energy is more than the binding energy of the electron, it is freed from the material and moves away with the kinetic energy given by the excess energy of the photon over the binding energy. This gives the photoelectric effect two characteristics. Firstly, the photon must carry at least the binding energy so there is a sharp cut-off in light wavelength for which the effect is seen. Secondly, as the photon energy above the cut-off increases, so does the kinetic energy of the electrons. A third characteristic is that as the intensity of the light source increases, so does the number of electrons liberated, as in a quantum description of light, an increase in intensity means an increase in the number of photons per unit area. Once photons have sufficient energy to remove electrons from atoms, the possibility of the scattering of photons by these electrons arises. The effect was first measured by Compton in 1923 and was used as further evidence for the photon model of light. As with the collision of snooker balls, both energy and momentum must be conserved so that the electron will take away some of the energy resulting in a scattered photon that has a lower energy and therefore longer wavelength. The amount of energy lost depends on the scattering angle and the maximum shift in the wavelength for a photon-electron scattering is about 4.9 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, twice the so-called Compton wavelength. Looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, it is evident that such shifts only become important for high-energy X-rays and gamma rays. Not all the photons scatter from essentially free electrons. Where the interaction occurs between a photon and an electron that is tightly bound to the nucleus, the collision is essentially that between a photon and the atom, which is several orders of magnitude heavier than an electron. This results in very little energy loss, and so Compton scattering experiments usually observe an intensity peak at almost the incident photon wavelength and a second at the electron scattered wavelength. The scattering of photons and the energizing of electrons which will subsequently lose their energy through X-ray production, either through electron-electron interactions or bremsstrahlung, has implications for radiation protection. This is because these effects produce radiation that is directed randomly and is not aligned along the main photon beam. However, as the scattered and secondary photons are of lower energy, they will be more easily absorbed by matter, so a decreased thickness of shield is required to attenuate them. This leads to the standard shielding design, where the thickness is greatest along the primary beam path, as this receives the highest energy and therefore deepest penetrating radiation, whereas the surrounding shielding can be thinner, as this only needs to absorb lower energy scattered at radiation. In many radiation environments where access is required, such as a LINAC treatment room, a labyrinth is used for access. With this arrangement, photons must scatter several times to reach the outer door, with a subsequent loss of energy with each scattering event. Therefore, in this configuration, the shielding at the door is typically the thinnest. At very high energies, greater than about 1 MeV, the photons can carry enough energy to produce an electron-positron pair. This cannot happen spontaneously, as the direct conversion of a photon to an electron and a positron cannot conserve both momentum and energy. However, in the strong electric fields round, for example, atomic nuclei, the reaction can occur, as excess energy and momentum can be transferred to the nucleus. In the conversion, an electron and positron are created with a kinetic energy determined by the excess energy of the original photon. The final energies of the particles will be unequal, as the positron will be repelled by the highly charged nucleus, increasing its energy, while the electron will be attracted, decreasing its energy. Both particles will lose energy by emitting X-rays that will typically be of much lower energy than the original incident photon. Also, 
Once the positron has lost sufficient energy, it will annihilate with an electron and produce two photons of 511 keV, half the threshold energy of the original instant photon for this reaction to occur. Pair production has a significant impact on shielding requirements. It has previously been stated that as the photon energy increases, so does the penetration depth into a material. However, for sufficiently high energy photons, above about 5 MeV for lead, pair production becomes dominant. This effectively reduces incident photon energy to no more than 511 keV at the first scattering event, instead of allowing for a more continuous spectrum of scattered energies, as seen by Compton scattering. Therefore, while thicker shielding is required for these higher energies, the fractional increase required is not as large as that seen for lower energy photons.